Yeah? And then third, uh, that person must have a great compassion. Yeah? Without compassion, again, you're not going to help others. So compassion is a really bridge, like me uh, as a Buddha and others as a sentiment. How we connect each other like a bridge is a compassion. Yeah? Uh, that's the third one. The fourth is like a, uh, in the uh, Buddha, you no need to ask to help, just naturally help you. So it's like a mother. Yeah? Uh, when you have a child, child no need to ask the mother to help me. Mother always there, kind of ready to help you, whatever condition. Yeah? So that's a, like a Buddha, it's like a mother, like a, without asking, you no need to pay anything to help you. Just without unpay, they always help you. And then Buddha is never discriminate whether somebody offering me, then say you're offering me, I'm like you, I can help you. Somebody not offering anything, I'm not going to help. Never, never discriminate whether you offer or not offer, whether you respect or disrespect. Anyone who need will always help. Like a mother, like if you have a two child, one child is very nice to you, other child is so naughty to you, but mother never discriminate. They both love it equally. You know? Sometimes you like mother, the naughty one, more than the nice one, because that person needs more help. Yeah? So that kind of four quality. Yes. Any, so if you really examine who has a perfect this four quality, it's the only the Buddha. So therefore, Buddha is the right object to take refuge. Yeah? <clears throat> uh, so this in so this way, uh, so when we actually uh, always good to take refuge before you start to meditate, main part of meditation. Yeah, just think of all these reasons, and then visualize the Buddha right in front of you, and then uh, front of the Buddha yourself, and then normally we talk about your parents, like a father in the right side, mother in the left side, your enemy. Uh, or your difficulty person in the front of you, and then the rest of the uh, outside. Because what we say, like, uh, uh, we talk about the attachment, anger, and ignorance. These three are actually is uh, our mental uh, condition. But this mental condition can also <clears throat> arise due to outer conditions. So what outer condition is like, uh, when you look at someone that you love, that person is a condition to increase your desire mind. When you look at the person you dislike, that person is a condition to rise your anger mind. And then you look at someone neutral person, that's a condition to rise ignorance mind. So now you neutralize them, like look like equal them, like then there's no attachment going to come, no going to be anger rise. So because you the condition that creating this three poison, you neutralizing when you uh, being in the refuge field, you treat everyone's equal. So once you treat everyone's equal, then you're not going to have a specific attachment to someone. You're not going to have a specific anger to someone. You're not going to have an attachment, ignorance to someone. So that's how uh, all the purpose. So, so in this reason, I mentioned like uh, you not just uh, sacrifice your life when you re- practice refuge to invite everything. The whole entire purpose is like uh, again treating oneself to get rid of these three sickness that we have. You know, make sense or not? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So these are so really important. Uh, if you don't understand that part, just refuge the Buddha in front of me. I'm in front of uh, uh, the Buddha and they invite without knowing all these reasons. It becomes like a religion. You know, it's a religion belief system. Like uh, you just think, uh, because I'm Buddhist, I have to do that. But that's not mean it's a kind of, again, uh, it's a kind of a healing and a treatment because it's that's really hard. yeah. So in this way, then you can recite the uh, refuge lines. Like uh, my teacher always says, like uh, uh, when you do sutrayana practice, then uh, Buddha is the first. I take refuge in the Buddha. Uh, I take refuge in Dharma is the second, I take refuge in Sangha in the third, I take refuge in Guru in the last, in the Sutta in the tradition. Yeah, not the first, after the Sangha. But if you do Vajrayana practice, then Guru is the first. Guru, Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. So Vajrayana Sutra, because in the Sutrayana, no matter how good teacher, you don't think he or she is the Buddha. 
he or she is representing Buddha. But in the Vajrayana tradition, uh, whether uh, ordinary person, once you receive the major empowerment, he or she, you have to think real Buddha. So it's a slightly different. Uh, so in, in this way, when you practice a Vajrayana, you should follow the uh, Vajrayana system. When you do the Sutrayana, you should follow the Sutra system. So if you follow the each system, then you no get confused. But if you not know each different system, then you mix up, you might get confused. You know? So it's really important to have a clear cut the two different practice. So this is the belong to uh, the Sutrayana, so Guru uh, supposed to be the last one. Yeah? So that way, uh, when you kind of uh, uh, reciting this word is really important not just to concentrate just the sound of the the prayers rather reflect the meaning like uh, sometimes you think of the quality of the Buddha some other times you think of your own the difficulties so that's the reason I'm seeking this uh, kind of uh, protections yeah refuge so as long as your mind there then it's a genuine practice so this genuine practice actually helping you to overcome this problem. Yeah, so this way you want to get refuge. And then end refuge, uh, like a <coughs> uh, then uh, create the motivation, like a, I'm doing this practice uh, to attend fully Buddhahood, sake of sentient beings. I mean, yesterday I mentioned like a many of us because we are kind of so much brought up individualistic. So everything that we do, most we do just for self. It's nothing wrong with it, but when we do it for the self, uh, because even we do practice Dharma, it's a for self, but then intention is so, makes a big differences. If you say, I want to do this, I'm doing this for my own peace, you will achieve the peace. If you say, I'm doing this to attend Buddhahood's sake or sentient being, that peace is far more greater. So you, we have all this opportunity, we have an option. Yeah? When we have this option, we should choose the best one. Yeah? Like a normal things, like a, it's material things, like a, uh, even we want to buy the best one, we can't afford because that more daily kind of cost. Yeah? Like a, something that you love so much, it may cost thousand dollars, but you can't afford to pay that. So we have to buy the cheaper one, like a few dollars one. But when you come into the practice, it's not based on the finance, you know. Whether you choose uh, just I'm doing this with my own calm mind, or I'm doing this certain Buddha or Sekho Sentibi, nothing extra cost. Just, just slightly different thinking. Just t- slightly different thinking is a what di- makes the differences to you. So that's the reason it's so important to uh, go, with, go f- for big one, not a small one. Yeah? <laughs> So, on the spiritual greedy, I think it's a good greedy. Yeah? <laughs> <clears throat> so, this way we uh, cultivate the motivation. That's, uh, so, that's the uh, uh, preliminary part of the meditation. Then, main part of meditation, then parting from the four attachment. Uh, the first one, if you have attachment to this life, you are not Dharma practitioner. Second, if your attachment to samsara, you do not have a renunciation. Uh, third, if you uh, uh, attach self-purpose, you do not have a bodhicitta. Uh, fourth is if your uh, grasping arises, you do not have a view. So these four lines, the main practice. So now we talk about the uh, first, if you have attachment to this life, you are not Dharma practitioner. Uh, So now, in the, like a, there is a two free attachment for this life. Then there's three practice. First, we talk about precious human rebirth. Uh, second, man practice the impermanence. And then third, uh, supporting that man practice is the law of karma. There are three uh, meditations. So first, like a human precious rebirth. Uh, again, it's an important thing in this way. Uh, so 
that every one of samsari beings having different kind of a degrees of difficulties in their own life. Yeah? So all this problem are uh, not just arising by itself. If we look out there, we can see so many beautiful trees, rocks, rivers, lakes, so many out there. None of them just appear out of nowhere. Everything out there created by its own causes, own conditions. Yeah. So without the cause, the result is not going to be there. So likewise, we as human, we not just pop up. Yeah? It's created by its own cause. The cause of a human rebirth is like a, the virtues, uh, accumulate a number of virtues and abandon all non-virtues. So that's the prime cause to reborn human beings. So, when we say like a, a Dharma, I mentioned yesterday, Dharma is not just a, the recitation alone. Dharma is not just kind of a making offering alone. Dharma is not just a doing some kind of a circumvallation or prostration. No, the, Dharma is the wisdom. Dharma is the compassion. Yeah? So, without the wisdom and compassion, no matter how hard you recite the mantra, you're not going to, going to get anywhere. It may turn into the worldly dharma. If you become the worldly dharma, then it's a seed of samsara rather than seed to liberation. Yeah? So this reason, dharma is, we call the pure dharma is the real uh, medicine to free you from the samsari problems. So now to practice dharma, you need to have a, some kind of body or form. Without body or form, you can't practice Dharma. So now you look in these six realms, like uh, yesterday we talked about human, uh, God, and the demigod. These are we call the three fortunate beings. And then there's uh, hungry gods, animal, and hell beings, we call the unfortunate beings. So within these six realms, which body is suitable practice dharma if you really think so if you think human is the best body to practice dharma so in that sense we are so fortunate have a perfect body to practice dharma yeah so when we have this perfect body then we need to know how to not to waste this opportunity so we have to reflect the three things First one, we need to understand how hard, how difficult to obtain human rebirth. Yeah? Uh, so that's the first one we need to meditate. We meditate means like we need to examine. I mentioned like meditate means like a, like a, uh, the Buddhist meditation means like a, <clears throat> uh, two things. One is like a, a developing the knowledge, that's one meditation. And the second is like a, whatever you get knowledge, bring into the fruition. So this, this, this too is meditation. When you meditate, not bring in the knowledge, or not bring in the fruition of the knowledge, then you're not meditating. Even you close your eyes, not moving your body, stay hours there, just zombie, statue, <laughs> no, nothing else. So real meditation as in like you fully active your mind, active with the develop the knowledge and knowledge bring into the fruition. If you achieve that part of goal, then you're really doing the proper meditation. So in this reason it's so important to differentiate what is meditation and what's not meditation. Without knowing that, many of us we think I'm meditating, but the reality we're not doing at all. So it means like we're wasting our time. 